for most of us, implementing authentication is not a fun thing. It doesn't add anything to the app that you're building. No user is going to be happy if your authentication system works well, but they're only going to be unhappy if it doesn't. The thing is, eventually you have to rip that bandaid off. You have to implement authentication at least in 99% of apps at some point. That's why for most apps I built, I really try to avoid authentication or use like a hosted provider where you trade convenience, which is great, for money and the control over your user data. Recently, I saw a tweet by an open source authentication library I had never heard of before, that is Lucia, announcing their 3.0 version. And then I found out this is actually made by a single guy. It got me curious, how good can an authentication library made by a single guy actually be? And it turns out quite good. It gets a lot of things right. And to see why, here's one of the best definitions of abstractions that I've heard. Abstractions that give you full control tend to be good. Abstractions that wrap things and repackage them tend to be difficult. And the degree of abstraction that this guy has created in this package, of course, along with all the open source contributors that help with it, is actually pretty fascinating because it strikes just the right balance. And fun fact, this guy actually wrote like a huge article about every design decision and where he wants to head with this package and so on. Don't worry, we're not gonna read this because I have the reading comprehension and attention span of a second grader, but I want to highlight one important point here, and that is under the password section. Next, password-based auth. Unlike auth.js, I don't want to make it harder to implement credential validation, meaning email and password, because I do want to discourage people from implementing it if they're not willing to put the care required to pull it off. And this is actually not an easy thing to do. Securely implement authentication with email and password has a ton of implications, but intentionally kneecapping your product or your authentication package to not really allow it, like AuthJS is doing here, or he's allegedly saying AuthJS is doing it here, is a very interesting design decision. Because technically, you can totally go for email and password in AuthJS, but it's kind of difficult. And this guy has very consciously made the decision to allow for it. And how this code right here is written and structured into getting the user, validating the password, then handling whatever action you want afterwards. The flow of authentication that is so important is never actually abstracted away from you. This is, for example, the entire code or pretty much the entire code you need for GitHub authentication on your website. We simply make a request to GitHub. The helper for that is provided by the library and the entire flow is then provided with framework helpers that help us achieve the rest. That's not something the library needs to handle, so it doesn't. Which leads us to super intuitive sign-in flows using OAuth. For example, we can simply log in with GitHub. We can also log out again. And this is pretty much the only code you need for that. And the more I've played around with this library, the more I appreciate this approach because essentially we have bad abstractions. This would be something along the lines of, let's say, a sign in function. Sign in. This is super abstract. This is very high level. You don't really know what's going on inside. You just know when you need to call the function. On the other side, we have great abstractions. And I think this auth library is a super good example for that because what it does instead of the single sign in function that we can call, we don't really know what's happening. We have a few building blocks called primitives that we can build on, like a create user utility that helps us in the sign in flow to make a single user, like a create session utility that creates the session for the user after we have created the user. And after creating the session, we also have the option to create a session cookie. That is basically how internally this auth library works. And this is never actually abstracted. But instead, these are the building blocks that allow you to configure your own authentication flows. You can define your own sign-in function. You can define your own sign-up function and essentially build on all these parts because they're never abstracted away. You maintain full control over every single part of the authentication flow at every point. And that is exactly what I think this library gets so right. For example, this is the callback that we get from GitHub where we can get the GitHub response by making a request to their API, check if they're an existing user. This is all handled not by the authentication library, but this is only our database at work here. And if there is an existing user, in that case, we create the session, we create the cookie, and then send back that cookie via framework internals. And it's a beautiful design decision to let this be handled by the framework, because that's what the framework is good for, right? And then all the stuff that you don't want to handle yourself that is inherently related directly to authentication 
authentication, only those parts are then kind of abstracted into functions that you can reuse across the board. And this principle is called composability. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you with like a super boring Wikipedia article, but essentially it's a principle that deals with the interrelationships of component, blah, 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 we don't really care, but these components can be selected and assembled in various combinations. That's what matters, because that's exactly what we can see right here. We build on the individual primitives to build our own functions and don't have one big ass abstraction that is super weird. We don't know how it works internally. Prime example of this is a UI library called Chats the NUI. You might know it, you might not know it. If you don't know it, take a look at the API and it will be very clear what I mean. You can go to virtually any component of this UI library, like an alert dialog, for example. There's a bunch of low level primitives that are then put together to form an entire component. That's the beauty of the right level of abstraction. That's one big reason why I think this UI library has found so much adoption. This is just really nice to work with. It offers you so many primitives that you can build on top of that are not one big block. And the second super good example is the ORM I'm using for this. This is called Drizzle ORM. Again, you might know it, you might not know it. The point is there's alternatives like Prisma that completely invent their own syntax to interact with your database. That has the advantage that it's much easier to get started with, but you also don't profit from any dialect of SQL like Postgres because it's all mashed together. And in a lower level abstraction, you have to write more code. It is not very easy to get started with compared to the more abstract alternative like NextAuth, like any other UI library or like Prisma, but it does allow you much more control in the long run once you actually get used to the APIs. So I think this trend to have less abstraction is actually pretty good. It's both the best thing and the worst thing at the same time that could possibly happen to beginners because it's the hardest way to get started. The more abstraction, like in Prisma, for example, the easier it is for beginners to use, but also the less you learn as a beginner. How do proper authentication flows work? You don't know if there's too much abstraction. How do you know how a good UI library works under the hood if there's so much abstraction? You get my point, right? It's hard for beginners if there's zero abstraction, but also it's probably one of the best ways to learn. So let me know, what do you think of this auth library of the trend to have less abstraction, which I really like, but maybe not everybody likes it. So let me know what you think. That's gonna be it for me for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.